Good evening. Hi, hey. Good evening, ma. Ma. Good evening. Uh, do we have Jeremy in the room now? Jeremy, are you in? Please, can we all mute our devices so that we don't have a lot of interaction um, interceptions from us? Please just mute your devices. Put Hello, good evening. Good evening. You can please use the chat room, but please do not um, uh, use your audio or the video at this point in time to avoid distraction. Hello, Jeremy. I can't see you yet. Hello, Jeremy. I can't see you yet. Is Mrs. Great. Hi, Jeremy. <laughs> hello, hello. Hi, good to see you. You too. How are Welcome. you doing today? Welcome, very well. Thank you. I don't know, I guess it's morning over there with you. Yeah, it's almost afternoon. <laughs> oh, okay, good, good. So it's a good timing. Yeah, welcome. Okay. I'm sure all our participants are excited to be in your class. I can see that we already have, oh, wow, around about 50 people and it's growing like every second jumping in. <laughs> Good to have you here. Um, so I'll be co-hosting this uh, class with you. And um, we're supposed to have Patience a funny day here as well, although I can see her here. But I'm sure that before we are done, she will be able to um, uh, sort out and get in here. So we will quickly start not to um, um, lose time. So everyone, good evening and good afternoon, good morning from wherever you're joining from. My name is Abiodu Olubito and I'm the group head for Women Banking and Access Bank, which we know as W Initiative. W Initiative is actually the home of everything Access Bank has to offer to women, from financial to non-financial services. So I welcome you once again to this W Masterclass. And here we are actually going to be talking uh, about the strategies for positioning um, um, your, your, your export business on a global landscape and becoming investment ready. We know today that of course, uh, what the exchange rate is saying is actually scary out there for us in Nigeria. And a lot of products are actually uh, uh, export, export, uh, so it's, they make more money. Their market is actually outside the shores of this country. So how do you position that product of yours for being export ready? How do you put it on a global landscape? There are so many investment opportunities that are also out there for you to take advantage of. And I'm sure that Jeremy is so excited to show us the way how we can get these things and how we can learn and how to maneuver and make sure that we have the best of the opportunities uh, that we have. So Jeremy, once again, is a trade and investment advisor at Prosper Africa USA. And Pros Prosper Africa is one of the, um, is one of the, um, is under the US government. We have USAID under it. And USAID is actually one of the 17 US government departments and agencies that makes up Prosper Africa initiative. So I'm telling you that if you're in this class, you're privileged to have Jeremy taking you through this, this um, evening, as the case may be. So without uh, much ado, I'm just going to welcome Jeremy once again, and I would allow him just take the floor. So let me say to us that Jeremy's uh, presentation, he actually wants us to get full value of what it is that he will be speaking to us about. So if you have any question as he is speaking, please be chatting them, be dropping them in the chat box so that as soon as he speaks, to uh, maybe like 15 minutes, we'll be able to take some of those pertinent questions and we don't wait till the question and answer time. 
But please just remember to put our videos off and put our audio off as well so that we don't have interactions. If you have any questions, put them in the chat room and trust me, we're going to make the best of our time to ensure that we take as many questions and get real value out of the session with Jeremy this evening. So Jeremy, welcome and then over to you. Abi Odin, thank you so much. Uh, I am absolutely thrilled to be here today um, speaking to the group. You know, the, the W Initiative Masterclass is one of the really great initiatives that we've seen uh, coming out of Nigeria, especially um, helping women uh, entrepreneurs really get to that next step. Um, you know, Prosper Africa is a presidential initiative from the United States government uh, with the goals to substantially increase two-way trade and investment between the United States and the countries in Africa. And we do this by combining the tools and resources of 17 US government agencies. So Prosper Africa is a bit of a, I like to think of it as a bear hug around all of what the US government is already doing in trade and investment. And we help elevate it while also creating a one-stop shop for businesses to engage with the US government. Uh, we have close to 100 tools and resources for businesses in Africa, but it can be difficult to navigate that. And, you know, I'll be the first to recognize, you know, in my decade working with the U.S. government that uh, it can be very difficult to access. Uh, it can be challenging to understand where to go. And so, yeah, I'll give a little bit 10 minute overview of what Prosper Africa is, what the U.S. government is doing. But then I do want to turn it over to the group and hear from you all, because what I found um, in this work is that a lot of times there are best practices that can be shared across businesses, but, but a lot of times it's very specific. Um, and we do a lot of custom counseling uh, with businesses here at Prosper Africa to help guide you, introduce you, um, and really get you to that next step for your business and what you're trying to achieve. Um, we, we do this by partnering with the private sector. We advance deals, promote market opportunities, strengthen business climates uh, throughout the continent. Um, and we do this because we know that it fosters shared prosperity, both here in the US and across the continent in Africa. Uh, since launching Prosper Africa 2019, the US government's closed 800 deals uh, in 45 countries in Africa worth about $50 billion. So, you know, there's substantial business going on here. We're building on this momentum now by launching new tools uh, so that we can deliver better access and we can be more agile and have more competitive packages of support to provide to everyone there. Um, I really look at Prosper Africa as addressing both an opportunity and a challenge. Uh, the opportunity is that everyone on his call will recognize Africa will continue to increasingly play an incredibly important role in the global economy here going forward. It's the fastest growing markets in the world are in Africa and the growing population is young, urban, digitally connected and very tech savvy. Uh, two examples you know, that I'd like to point out right off the top. In 2016, African startups raised $350 million of private capital investment into their businesses. By 2021, that number had gone up to 4 billion. So we can see, and we you know, expect despite COVID that it will go up a little bit this year as well. So you could see that giant rise um, in the interest of private investment into African startups. Um, and then the, the other part obviously is the African Continental Free Trade Agreement, which is a game changer for trade, uh, intra-African trade, but also international trade with the United States. You've now created what is the largest free trade zone in the entire world. Um, and it's new and it's evolving, but it's still very exciting and presents a great opportunity. Um, you know, the other side of that coin is the challenge, uh, is the story that we see in the United States in the news. You know, Western narratives continue to focus on poverty and corruption, conflict, um, and we're missing out on an opportunity to build some mutually beneficial trade and investment partnerships between the United States and, and, and countries in Africa. Um, you know, we, we, we need new stories, we need new policies, we need new exciting businesses uh, to spotlight and to shine uh, a really bright light on to change this narrative here in the US. To do that, we know we need to provide companies with a little bit more information and better networks um, so that they can do business effectively. Uh, we need better access to our US government tools that I mentioned earlier. 
And that's part of why Prosper Africa exists is to create a, a one-stop shop. So you don't have to navigate this uh, spaghetti bowl of government tools. Instead, you can come to us and we can help bring you there more efficiently without wasting your time. Um, and then we also, you know, this risk perception that people have in Western, uh, you know, economies of Africa needs to change. I, my, my opinion, it is not accurate to what the actual risk levels are when it comes to investing in businesses there. So again, Prosper Africa is this one-stop shop where we uh, developed a team of trade and investment advisors dedicated to supporting businesses and investors seeking U.S. government assistance. You can get to us directly by going to our website, prosperafrica.gov, G-O-V. Um, but we don't work alone as advisors. We work with our U.S. embassy deal teams across the continent. We have embassies in every country. We work with our USAID missions. Uh, where we don't have a USAID mission in a country, we have regional support from a neighboring country there as well. We also have lots of experts that we've contracted throughout the U.S. government, but also uh, external to us. So we have no, a number of firms that we keep on retainer in places to provide that market intelligence and insight that your business might need to get to the next level and deliver results. Um, you know, I, I want to give just a quick example here. Um, you know, we've got we've got some really incredible success stories, but one in Nigeria, I think, is particularly interesting is uh, Michael Moreland founded Field Intelligence um, a couple of years ago uh, to improve healthcare access on the continent. Uh, recently, his team came to us and we were able to provide some advisory support to help the business prepare for their Series A round. Um, with this support, they were able to raise three point six million dollars, uh, led by a Massachusetts based family office. So where we're able to connect also with private capital here uh, in the United States to try to connect with businesses in Africa, I think is a very exciting part of our work. Um, we do believe in African solutions for African problems. Um, you know, we believe in the power of U.S. African partnerships to address those problems. And so a lot of new programming that you're going to see rolling out later this year and early next year through Prosper Africa and our partner agencies to address what we've seen as gaps in, in, in the market. Um, you know, we're completely committed to this work of engaging investors on both sides of the continent to drive private capital, recognizing that no one government alone has enough money to fund the, pro to, to fund the uh, solution to the problem. Um, and we know we can't get the impact we, we are looking for by helping just one company at a time. So a lot of what we're doing is spending time with groups like the W Initiative to, to provide advisors like me on webinars just like this so that we can get out to larger groups to spread the word, um, to really accelerate the growth. And we know there are millions of businesses out there that aren't aware that the U.S. government has tools and resources to help that we even care about this. And so the more that we can spread the word about this, I think the better off we all are. Um, you know, part of this is a two-way trade scenario. So I just talked a lot about the investment, but there's also a trade component here that, that can't be overlooked. Um, you know, the U.S. should represent a very attractive market for exports. Um, and there's a lot of question out there about how to access that. Maybe you've heard of a thing called a GOA, which is the African Growth and Opportunity Act, which allows certain classes of goods to be imported to the United States duty free. Um, unfortunately, a GOA is, is very underutilized across the continent. We find that many countries and businesses just simply aren't using it. And so it, in, to the extent that they are exporting to the United States, they're paying duties and tariffs that they wouldn't necessarily have to pay otherwise. Really, AGOA is just a, a matter of filling out the right paperwork at the right time, submitting it to the right office, and ensuring that your goods aren't held up in a port here in the United States when you go to bring it in. Um, you know, another good example of, of driving exports out of West Africa uh, is a US-based company called Red River Foods, which was uh, sells cashews. Um, and they were sourcing them out of Ghana and a couple other West African countries. They had been taking them to Vietnam for processing and then shipping them all the way back around the world to the United States for our markets. Well, through work with USAID in West Africa, we were able to provide a $3 million co-investment grant to Red River Foods 
And then they kicked in $47 million to build a processing facility in Ghana. So we cut out any of this shipping it to Asia for processing. We're creating jobs and prosperity in West Africa. I think something like 400 jobs were created locally uh, thanks to that co-investment grant. Um, but you see, it's, it's a tiny piece. We get USAID gives 3 million. The company has then invested 47 million. Uh, you know, they sought that through private commercial and uh, capital investments through you know, private equities that then accelerate this. And, and by the end of this year, they expect to be fully functional and sending all of these, uh, these cashews back to the United States, completely processed and ready to go. And then just really finally, let me wrap it up here by saying, you know, we are trying to develop a global strategy to unlock private capital flows. We recognize that there are trillions of dollars of institutional and other types of private capital sitting on the sidelines right now. And part of our job that doesn't get a lot of notoriety is, is working with those investors to try to, you know, really convey what the risk profile is in markets and in certain companies. We have created a tool called the Virtual Deal Room, which we host on our website. Through our Virtual Deal Room, we take uh, African investment opportunities, a lot of, you know, Series A, Series B type startups who are looking for that seed funding. We're trying to package them and bring them to Western investors through our virtual deal room. We promote those opportunities with a group of about 500 investors that we've curated that we work with very closely. And then we try to make a one-to-one -one connection and help guide a business to close an investment with, with those private capital providers. Um, you know, recognizing again that donor and aid agencies across the world, USAID being the largest from the United States government, but many others, uh, simply don't have the resources that it takes. The, the $380 trillion um, of global institutional investment money that should be mobilized in this space, that's where we need to look. And so, um, you know, not for the first time, but really uh, for the first time as a very focused effort, uh, the United States government is very much leaning into this space, trying to bring endowments and family offices and other private capital to the fore in Africa. Um, just one example there is Leona Bridges, uh, as chief investment officer for the San Francisco Employee uh, Retirement System. Um, we brought Leona around the world. Um, we had Leona with us in Marrakesh, Morocco, just last week for the CCA US Africa Business Summit, for example, um, you know, trying to, to shine a light on these opportunities. Um, as part of that, um, you know, the, the system there decided to invest $100 million into a clean energy solution fund um, that actually includes the financing for the first independent hydropower project in West Africa. So a lot of transformative things addressing you know, priorities such as, uh, as climate change, uh, but it all starts with trade and investment. And it all starts with, let, let's do something a little bit different, more innovative, and let's modernize some of how we do business with the private sector as the US government. Um, it's a big mission. Uh, we have bitten off a lot here, um, but I am really confident and optimistic that we can achieve many, if not all of our goals, uh, but not alone. And so uh, I look forward to hearing your questions, um, understanding where your business is at, and then please, again, visit our website, prosperafrica.gov. Um, when we're all finished up with the webinar entirely, uh, I will make my email available to everybody that's on here. Uh, feel free to write to us, uh, to me and my team, and we'll get back to you as quickly as we can. Um, largely, what, how this process will work is, you know, we're going to ask a lot of questions. We want to see, you know, where your business is at, where you're trying to go, and then we're trying to fill in the gap. Uh, obviously, it's a lot more technical than that. Uh, but, you know, for the purposes of the, uh, the opening remarks, I think I'll, I'll leave it there. Um, Abiodun, I don't know if we want, do you want to pull the questions and throw them at me? Or how do you want to, how do you okay, want to so do it? I think, you know, I'll allow you to continue to flow. I love the introduction. The data you've given, you know, is quite, um, um, you know, mind blowing to say, oh, so this much uh, is out there in terms of what you're doing and what is available even for women to um, access. However, there's one question here. Uh, she said, um, you mentioned seed funding. 
what is seed, what is seed funding and is it available for us as women preneurs? Yeah, that's a good question. So um, we do work with a lot of startup businesses, entrepreneurs that are, you know, a sole proprietor where it's just you, uh, you know, out there doing your business, um, you know, and you're thinking, you know, how might I grow? So that is the topic of the, uh, of the panel here today. And I'm happy to provide a little insight there. Um, you know, my, my experience prior to joining the U.S. government was exactly this, helping businesses start in the United States and then how to get to that next level. Um, so really, you're, you're going to start, you're, you have your sole proprietor going, you have your small business going, and you're saying, well, what's the next step? And the seed funding is the next step. So for all, I want to I say this, for all businesses that are looking to take that next step and really grow and be a legitimate uh, business where you, you don't have to worry about a side gig anymore, um, you're going to want to get yourself to the point where you could attract seed funding okay so we start with the pre-seed funding which is what a lot of people think of when they say oh i need an angel investor i need somebody to to kick in a million dollars so i can get my first two years of operations set up um you know i need to grow i need technology platforms for example i have to develop an app i have a lot of expenses right out of the gate to take it from me just selling something here to really growing the business um, so what we can do is help uh provide resources and lots of things. You know, the W initiative obviously has a lot of this as well about how to write a business plan, right? That's a critical first step. Um, getting a very detailed business plan with outstanding financials is something that every business that's looking to grow or that's seeking investment will need to draw that investment because no investor will go into a business unless they know what the return on their investment is going to be. And they can't know that unless you can lay out your numbers really, really clearly. Okay. So starting with a solid business plan with your, not just projected or optimistic financials, but legitimately proven financials, typically to get to that point, you will have had to have a, a, some sort of pilot. So again, if you're a sole proprietor and you're trading something locally or you're selling something locally, you should be able to develop a baseline of who your customers are, you know, what sorts of goods and services they require, how much it costs to acquire those customers. Are they retained customers? Do they come back for more? Are there additional products that you can sell them? You should be able to kind of put some figures together around that that are legitimate right now to help you, first of all, understand your customers and understand who is buying your product. Once you have that sorted out, then through a lot of the other tools and resources you could find on our website, you could find through the W Initiative, you can find honestly through the uh, International Trade Centers, they have some incredible webinars and resources for helping you take it from that level, your local level, to expand it into an actual business plan. So once you have that, then you want to develop some financials, uh, projected financials, uh, if you were to grow. So let's say oh, I'm selling these things now, but I think if I just had a little bit more, I could buy more and I could sell, you know, 10 times more. So we're looking at the X number of multiplier on top of, again, a lot of math uh, to figure out where that business might grow, where your you know, expenses are, where your profits are, you know, and what your overall revenue is then. Okay. Uh, in a lot of times, having a, having a local accountant help you with this is, is not a bad idea. There are also law firms out there that provide a lot of advisory services that can kind of get you to this point as well. Um, so once you develop that business plan and you know where you're going to go with the business, the next step is getting a solid pitch deck and getting yourself a really great elevator speech. So I would always counsel businesses. You need what we call an elevator speech, which is Let's say you step into the elevator and you're riding to the fifth floor and there's a decision-making executive in that elevator with you. You need a canned 20 to 30 seconds to say, oh my gosh, this executive, let me tell you about my business. You know, hammer down, you need to mention something about the profit and the revenue in that 30 seconds. Obviously you have to be very excited about it, but that's not gonna carry the day. You wanna know your customers, to be able to describe your customers very quickly, describe your mission statement quickly, and then close it up with a very quick 
here's where we need to go and here's what we need to do it. So that's where seed funding comes in. Once you've accomplished all of these things, then your business is ready to seek seed funding. And when I said earlier that there was $4 billion invested in African startups last year, those were typically seed, seed rounds uh, of funding. First seed, second seed is just a way to kind of break up where you are in the business's maturity and which phase of the business growth would get what type of, of cash in, infusement, essentially. Um, so when we say seed funding, seed A is like, okay, I, I know what my business is and I know I need this amount of money to get to that next level and it's going to take a year or two to get there. Then we start a fundraising round. And um, you, know, you hear a lot of startups like in Silicon Valley um, will go around and they'll get $100 million or $200 million. People are just throwing cash around. Um, it's because they have incredible business plans an incredible elevator speech and a pitch deck. And they can allow investors to quickly grasp and understand the opportunity and the return on the investment for the investor itself. So again, through Prosper Africa, we do have some services uh, to provide to help kind of get you packaged up is the way we look at it, um, to get you to that kind of pre-seed or seed A level and then help you kind of look for those investments. Fantastic. So I'm sure for everyone and for the person that attempting that question, uh, I'm sure what the seed funding is, is very clear, just like he had explained. Yeah, seed funding. So, of course, but he has even gone further to break down what you need to be able to access it. If I can summarize, I heard him say that you must have your detailed business plan, which is very, very key. That is even you showing understanding of what your business, that you know what it is you're doing, and then you know, you know the nitty gritty of how that business uh, space is. And then you must have your starting projected financials to know that, yes, if you have this X Naira, X dollar put into your business, you're taking it to the next level, you know, this is what you will be getting, you know, maybe in another one year, considering that you get that seed funding into your business. And then you must have your pitch decks ready. So for some of you that have participated in the Wimepreneur uh, Mini MBA, this is one major course that we take there, pitching. And at the end of the day, we allow you to even practicalize it and win a grant. So if you haven't uh, registered for it, I think it's an opportunity for you to make sure that you put in your application today and um, make sure that you find your way into that mini MBA, which is totally, totally free, certified by IFC. So um, I think, yeah, I, I yeah. think um, that, that, that really helps. So um, there's one other question here. Uh, if I can just add one thing, Abiodun, to build off of what you just said, when you get an IFC certified pitch deck and you go through a class like this, that's meaningful not only to us, but to investors as well. Not to say you can't go off and develop it on your own, but we are going to look and see what team have you worked with to build this? You know, it takes a team. It's, it's very rare that just a single person can go off and do this on their own. But having a team and having the resources behind you and saying, I worked with the IFC to develop this, you know, this is in the right kind of format. That, that's very meaningful. Wow. So I think you heard it all. That's another plus for you and a more compelling reason for you to put in even for the mini, mini uh, women premier pitch at all that is currently open for application. So um, there's also a question here. Uh, someone had asked, uh, just a minute. Uh, so someone had asked that, um, how, how can she, oh, okay, so we'll take that after she's asking how she can register for the uh, womenpreneur. She, they said, Africa is not part of the nation listed on Amazon. And that, why is that? And so, will it be possible? <laughs> yeah, I know. These are discussions that we're very familiar with, um, you know discussions are ongoing at the highest levels about these sorts of things. I, I can say that we have helped um, Nigerian and other West African women access Amazon and Target stores. So through our West Africa Trade and Investment Hub, which is a USAID program based out of Accra, but covering all of West Africa, um, we're helped Mama Shea 
sell in over 10,000 Target stores and online in Target here in the United States. So Target is like, you know, as big as Walmart, I would say. Well, maybe not. Walmart might not like me to say that. But here in the U.S., it's one of those kind of stores where you go to get everything and there's a lot of them and they have a huge online presence and they even resell on Amazon as well. So I, I do know that we have seen some successes uh, with some limited exporters in accessing those big platforms. Um, more work definitely needs to be done. Um, and conversations are ongoing about how to make that happen. You know, one thing about Amazon that I find interesting is while you might not be able to find an African marketplace on Amazon, if you go to Amazon Prime and you start looking at their content, you're going to see a lot of African content. And I know for a fact, Amazon is laser focused on creative industries um, in Africa and how to bring more arts, culture, and entertainment um, resources as exports from Africa to the United States. So it's sometimes strange to think, but um, if you're an animator or an artist, you are a potential exporter and entities like Amazon are very interested in finding you because there's a huge demand globally from the global African diaspora for a lot of that content. So you know, while we're talking about Amazon, I think it, it's worth mentioning, I think the bigger chunk of their business is not necessarily selling items, but it is this kind of digital space. Okay, wow, that's fantastic. And then someone says that, um, what is your business doing to support that a lot of uh, uh, um, business women in Nigeria, they have challenges to get their products accepted for export. So they're asking, what is it that you, uh, you are providing to support that? Or what can they do to ensure that they can actually uh, put that product out there on the global space? That's a good question. So that seems a little bit more technical and outside of the money question, right? So um, if, if it's a technical issue that you're having with you know, trying to export to the United States, we have direct tools that can help you to use AGOA, for example, which I mentioned earlier, to understand which class of products, which type of products can be exported duty-free, um, and how to get through Customs and Border Patrol with those products. Um, we, you know, honestly, I had a, a company we were working with last year out of West Africa who was exporting to the U.S. and had some things stuck in the port of Baltimore and gave us a call, and we were able to put a couple calls around to Customs and Border Patrol and show them the AGOA paperwork that had been filled that should have released those products. And within about 48 hours, things were released with no penalty. So we can really, on the ground, provide some actual assistance um, to businesses that are trying to technically move something from here to there. Uh, we also have networks with shipping. I know I heard last week from a number of um, active exporters in the agriculture space saying shipping costs have spiked 400% in the last two months. And so, you know, that's a challenging one, but there are ways for us to use negotiated rates and competitive, you know, procurement processes in order to help drive that cost down a little bit, or in some cases, potentially supplement some of the cost that, you know, offset some of the cost that it's causing and and you know b between covid and now the you know this war in, in with russia and ukraine um you know global food prices have spiked in the united states inflation is running away and they keep jacking the 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 prime you know federal interest rate from the federal reserve like the economy's global economy is you know a little little goofy right now so you know we understand there's been disruptions and surges um in a lot of costs and you know, we'd like to think that we're here to help you kind of work through some of those issues and connect you to folks um, who've maybe had the same issue or somebody who can help solve those problems. Okay, fantastic. I hope you're all learning. Please, let's keep the questions coming. And why I would allow uh, Jeremy to go on with what he is actually having in stock for us uh, for today so that we allow him offload as much as he came with. <laughs> we will have Jeremy all the time. Uh, there's one other question here. Someone had said, is there a minimum or maximum amount of this funding that we can access? Right, so that's a good question. We have different kinds of funding uh, through different agencies in different places for different things. So um, 
it, it depends on where you are, first of all, you know, which country you're in or if you're operating regionally. It depends what type of product or service you're trying to sell or promote. Um, you know, therefore, what kind of business you're and you're trying to grow, how that growth is going to happen. Um, and it really depends on your current status. So a lot of businesses do come to us and they say, I started up six months ago and I'm really trying to get going, you know, it's challenging there, you know, there are a lot of classes, there are a lot of things that we can provide, but there's not a lot of money at that point, to be totally frank, you know, the bank will tell you the same thing. Yeah. Um, as a business, you have to get yourself to a certain point that you can be investment ready. Um, and so we can help get you there. But then once you're there, right, that's when things get really exciting for me, because Depending on where you're at and what you're doing, there may be grant money available, which is free money um, that you just get to take and keep and never have to pay back. There may be loans available. So through some of our agencies, we provide what we call um, mission transaction units, or they used to be called DCA, Development Credit Authorities, where the U.S. government partners with banks directly uh, for a class of investors. So I know we have many, many um, DCAs that are MTUs now. It's a lot of acronyms, I know, but we have these agreements with banks that the government provides first loss capital for uh, SME lending, for example. So, you know, in, in the event that a, a small business and quite frankly, a lot of small businesses do fail. It's just the nature of doing business. You know, if you follow a lot of entrepreneurs, they say, oh, you know, my my successful business was my third business. You know, I, I had to fail twice before yeah. I finally learned and got the next the final one going. Now that's my business. So failure is just a part of, of the whole thing. You know, so we recognize that we want to accelerate that growth. And so there's a lot of things where you wouldn't hear from the United States government directly because we, again, partnered with banks like Access Bank or Standard Bank to provide these sort of SME loan facilities. Um, and then it's an offset. So it hopefully accelerates the bank's lending in that space. Um, and a lot of these that we're doing and have done over the last few years are focused on women SMEs, you know, across uh, about a dozen countries in Africa. So again, it, it depends on what you're selling, how you're selling it, you know, where you're at in your business. But if you have a large project, and I think this is worth mentioning too, I, we've seen a lot of um, project developers now, large project developers are, are women, and they're locked out by an old boys club um, of project developers, large infrastructure projects largely are, have been done by men. Um, and so when a woman steps in and says, how, how do I, I don't know, never, nobody's given me any info, I have no mentor, I have no way to go. Um, we have a lot of resources there as well, and we get all excited when we see a large project uh, being brought forward by a woman um, or an investment fund for a large project being brought forward by a woman. And there are specific tools that we have. Um, the DFC can take out an equity position in a large, uh, large infrastructure project or provide debt financing, um, complicated debt financing. Um, if you're trying to work back with the U.S., provider of goods and services, our export import bank has some programs that can kind of provide loan guarantees to that US entity. And then working with the US African Development Foundation, which 100% of its funds go to African owned, uh, small and medium sized businesses, we can kind of create a linkage there, which kind of does this 360 um, approach to the trade. Uh, which would then in theory lead to an investment. And again, that's when things get very exciting and very complicated, but exciting. So I'll stop there. And, and the, again, the best way, and I'll just say, go to the website, take a look at what we have. But the best way, if you're in a scenario and you're not quite sure, uh, is to send us an email and to set up a 30-minute a, a advisory session with one of our advisors, and we'll talk you through it. You're on mute. I'll be Odin, you're on mute. <laughs> oh, apologies. I, I, I thought I had unmuted. 
So I guess we are all learning and we have taken down the very vital information Jeremy is dishing out to us this evening. Uh, he had mentioned the website, which he, I expect that every one of us would have, would have noted and make sure that we go there, prosperafrica.gov, so that you can then go there, you can even get more information, much more than uh, Jeremy is able to deliver to us within the uh, space of time that we have. And he has also given us a blank check at the beginning of this session that is going to give us his personal email and so we can bombard him as many questions as we want. And Jeremy will be so glad to respond to us. So please do not think that if your question is not taken within this session, uh, you know, that's it for you. You have Jeremy's email and you can send him an email uh, thereafter. Uh, Fumia Wajesu had uh, put in a uh, question talking about if it is possible that is your, is Prosper Africa having any plans to establish a cocoa processing plant in Nigeria? I'm sure you have the question already. They are not actually, that's not actually what Prosper Africa do. But then if you have the business of um, having that plant in Nigeria, you can actually go through them to access this uh, funding to support uh, that business. Uh, someone had also asked, um, yes, you're going to get his email, Abdul Malik, you're going to get his email. I think I read out the, uh, uh, the website and I'm still going to get it to type it into the, into the chat box so that every one of us can have it and save as well. Um, yeah, so someone had said that, um, I think this is from, um, just a minute. Yes, yeah, same Abdul Malik. Uh, he's saying that, yes, he had the process of how you can access the seed funding. He, has, he says that um, if the business is investment ready, they have their business plan, their financial is top notch, and of course they have, um, they're ready. And that um, how can they access the seed funding? So because it's specific to you, I would advise that you send Jeremy a personal email after this session so that he can guide you and he can take it uh, truly well so that he doesn't just pick out a case in point for you and then he's not able to elaborate on um, other things. So um, I don't know, is patience. Okay, yes, please. I, said, I could clarify a little bit there. So if you are investment ready and you're in, in a seed round and you're just looking to draw an investor, absolutely send me that information. What, I'll, what I'm going to do with it then is um, have you complete an NDA with our contracted advisors at Cross Boundary. Uh, we've uh, hired a bunch of folks here in Washington and actually based in South Africa uh, from a firm called Cross Boundary. And we have you sign an NDA with them. And they're the ones that technically run our virtual deal room. They're the ones that are going to work with me directly to promote you to the investors. So I just want to mention that, that there is this kind of small step in between but as soon as you get to us you get to them within a couple of days we're starting to work on it they're going to have a lot of questions to help shore up anything that they see uh, might be a question that an investor might ask then they're going to look to package it and promote it and those happen within a few weeks uh, from start to finish so it's not a real slow process it's actually pretty quick considering it's the u.s government wow wow <laughs> Wow, wow. I'm so excited. And seriously, I think we've just got a gold mine here that we should all take advantage of. So I put the uh, website on the chat box, prosperafrica.gov. And before we end this session, Jeremy is also going to oblige us with his email address so that we can send all of these other inquiries that we have to him. And uh, um, so I think, um, Jeremy, what, so what other things do you think that um, as women, we can benefit, uh, you know, from Prosper Africa. We've heard clearly that seed funding is a major one. And uh, you've also explained that, yes, it's not like we get it directly from Prosper Africa. You work with several DFIs of the US government that works with the commercial bank. And one of it is the recent signing we had with the Development Finance Corporation for the $280 million uh, uh, on lending financing we just signed on Monday. That's with Access Bank. And obviously it's available for women and youths. And of course, a majority 
capacity of it is to support women SME. So that's something that is one of the initiatives coming from uh, you know, the US government through Prosper Africa. So can you tell us some other benefits that we have uh, to, to, to enjoy you know, having you uh, here? Tell us what are those other things that Prosper Africa can offer to us? I'm really glad you mentioned that uh, Development Finance Corporation Access Bank partnership um, that was just finalized. That was going to be my cherry on the top here, but <laughs> it's that it's that sort of programming that everyone can look forward to. You know, we, we Prosper Africa only launched less than three years ago. Uh, <clears throat> we went through a, an administration transition, which, from a policy and bureau, bureaucracy standpoint, was pretty lengthy. Um, as we sought to redefine our objectives under Prosper Africa and under the Biden-Harris administration, uh, focused around partnership and, and, and really shared prosperity. Um, and that took a little while. And then by the end of last year, then we launched a $500 million five-year program through USAID called the Africa Trade and Investment Program. Um, a firm called DAI won that award and is subcontracting out RFPs and RFIs all the time now. I think we're up to number seven that's been released publicly, but there are a dozen more coming after this. And they are very specific to addressing, largely addressing SME uh, folks in Africa, you know, who want to do business with the United States. So the thing I'm, one of the things I'm most excited about is the uh, upcoming Pan-African uh, Trade Hub which will take all of what we learned in West Africa and Southern Africa, helping small businesses export and really blow it up to a big continent wide program um, where we'll have a huge team of trade and investment advisors uh, linked in through our website. Um, you know, I'm working diligently to create more customer service aspect to what we do um, rather than it just being kind of a cold pointing one way or the other you know, um, I think there's an opportunity for some humanity to be brought into this. And that's maybe just me, Jeremy talking, but I have a little bit of a berth to kind of pull some things out under this. And we just, we see a lot of very cool programs coming. So in addition to checking the website, I would encourage everybody to follow us on social media, Twitter uh, and LinkedIn, particularly where when new things do come out, we share them right away. Um, one thing to know about the US government though, when we launch a, a grant program or come out with a new RFI or RFP, and these are re requests for proposals or requests for information. So if you're a firm that's looking to uh, accomplish a certain programmatic objective um, through your business, you can apply for funding through USAID or a couple other agencies. And when we do this, um, you know, it's really measured and it, Things come out and then they close right away. So one thing I definitely want everyone on here to know is you got to catch it quickly. So much like how we had to jump into the rooms on this webinar here and you had to get in right then or you were going to miss the boat, that can happen. A lot of folks missed the boat. So we had um, one program in Zambia, for example, the Trade Boost programs, $30 million program, and it just awarded to two firms. And I've had a lot of companies coming at me saying, oh, I just heard about this after. How do I get into it now? Mm -hmm. And the sad truth is you can't. Uh, once the window closes, it's closed and it's closed for years. So the best way to catch these things is to follow Twitter and to follow LinkedIn because we get it out right away. And then to know you've only got about two weeks to submit. You know, when the U.S. government puts out a grand challenge saying, hey, we calling all concepts to address maternal health, for example, which which is a you know really important topic. Um, they get oversubscribed because we get applications from all over the world, and within a matter of hours, there are thousands of applications, right? And you know those grand challenges are only going to have a limited number of of winners. So get in early, get in quick, as much as you can. Have your materials ready to go. Um, you know, prepared, reviewed, edited, reviewed again, hacked apart chopped up, edited again, re-reviewed, repackaged, you know, so you, it's very, very tight because you're only going to have a little, little piece of window to get in on something like that, unfortunately, but that's the truth. And I want everybody to know that. 
Wow. Thank you, Jeremy. So because our time is fast uh, running, I want you to just tell us other things. We have just about maybe 15 minutes more in this session. So tell us other things that you've got for us this evening uh, before we take more questions, because then I'm sure that we would have to uh, move into the question and answer maybe in the major chat. You know, I guess one thing I should mention is, you know, Prosper Africa, we have offices in Johannesburg. We just opened an office in Rabat, um, but we work very closely, especially in Nigeria. We work very closely with the USAID mission and the embassy there. Um, we have a lot of staff on the ground in Nigeria, a lot of programs in Nigeria. So there's a lot of local things happening to also keep track of. So in addition to following us, I'd recommend you check in with the U.S. Embassy in Abuja. Um, on their social media handles. Um, a lot of times their public affairs will have uh, grants for things that don't always fall in a trade or investment scenario. So again, Prosper, we're very focused on the business aspect of it. But we have a lot of folks we're working with in education sector, for example, where they're not for profit and they, they have incredible things that they're doing and transformative things that they're doing. And it's, it's, it's badly needed. Um, and we're not always the best place to come for that because we're kind of looking at it from a different angle, but we're connected with, again, the public affairs at the U.S. Embassy, um, the education office at USAID, um, depending on some of the, the, the different sectors that we're talking about in health, you know, CDC is involved, the Nas National Institute for Health, NIH, um, based here in, in, in Maryland, has programs and partnerships, and so um, you know, don't, don't just say, oh, I, I'm not a, I'm not a trader and the U S government therefore doesn't have anything. You know, there are other places to find things, uh, that can help you and, and, and know that, you know, this is not business as usual from the United States government. This is, this is something very different. And those of us that have been around for a while are excited. And there's actually a line at the door here, um, in the government side, people trying to get in because they see how exciting it is to come work with us and, and, you know, to attack things from this angle, you know, it's, it's trade, not aid, you know, and I've heard that from other folks and I'm going to steal it because I believe it. And, and, and that's what we're trying to do. Wow. Wow. Thank you, Jeremy. Actually, um, what you said now has actually touched on the question Itoro is trying to ask. She had asked the um, Two questions. She said, what are the ways an online school can position herself to reach out to self students from other countries like Canada, US and UK? So if it is to secure, you know, funding, like he said to you, that's probably not trade. But she, I think Jeremy had mentioned that, yes, there is even an education sector under the US aid. Just make sure you are constantly checking that other grants and these are not uh, for profit. So it's not even something that um, there is not like a, a funding particularly that you need to repay. It might actually be a grant that to be available uh, for you. And she had also asked as well to say that, what is the best financial platform to receive money from your customers over, overseas? So if you are actually doing the trade and you're selling to um, um, consumers abroad, for instance, in the US, how best can you receive your, uh, uh, your payment? What's the best platform? Um, you know, traditional banking isn't going away. So to, to my friends at Access over there, we're not, we don't see you being replaced, but you know, the, the advent of mobile pay apps, I think is transformative. Um, you know, having lived in Africa for many years, having used MTN money to pay my bills, um, you know, I, it's, it's, it's pretty wild to think that you can get away with not having a bank account anymore and, and it works. Um, there is the question of foreign currency swaps and that does come up pretty often. I know the Naira uh, has, has its challenges against the US dollar and the fluctuations are big. And so sometimes there are questions of foreign currency. But again, this is something we're looking at with some of our programs through USAID is to ways to you know, help address some of the Forex concerns, um, which can change how much money you're making on a day to day basis. I, yeah, I get it. it. It can be a big challenging part of the business. And we're part of, you know, part of it maybe, but 
IFC is a big part of it as well. Several others have really leaned into that Forex space in the last couple of years. And I think the banks really have, have the leadership to help drive economies forward on the continent. Um, you know, Access knows its customers very well and knows their needs very well. And as a former banker, I would say like, you can, you can, kind, you can trust your bank, you should. Um, they're a partner there for you. <laughs> Wow, thank you, Jeremy, thank you so much. Uh, I know that we've taken a lot of time off uh, our second speaker, uh, Patience Afanide. Uh, she is a, well, she's, she's from the Nigerian Export Promotion Council uh, and she needs to tell us, okay, so what are those things that you need if you want to even export your product? She does that for women on a daily basis. So maybe at the local level, what you even need to prepare yourself with, she can quickly tell us. Uh, patients, are you in there now? Can we hear you? Hello, patients. Wow. Can you speak? Even if you can speak without your video, that will be okay. Wow. Oh, so sorry. I'm not okay. sure I see her in the room anymore, honestly. Yeah, uh, yeah. I was told she got back in and she chatted me again that our network is horrible and very unstable. Does that's one of the challenges we have here in Nigeria? And yeah. seriously, uh, we have to keep dealing with it. So just like every other thing, you know, we make the best of the uh, of the situation. We would also make your questions available to her. So if you want to know, even from the Nigerian Expert Promotion Council side, uh, that's our Nigerian hand that actually, you know, the platform where you can start the business of actually exporting what you produce. You can put your questions in and we'll definitely um, forward them to patients and then she can help us put answers to them and we will mail them back to you. We would ensure that. Uh, sincere apologies on our behalf for that. Uh, well, uh, you know, these things happen every time. So uh, we will just um, make the best out of it, just like I've said. So we have just about six minutes more in our class. So um, Jeremy, if, if I may ask, uh, so if I am a, uh, a businesswoman in Nigeria and I'm into fashion, for instance, and I feel that uh, my products are, uh, it's, it's something that consumers in the US particularly are very interested in. So what can give me an edge? What can give me an edge against another person to be able to push that product? Because in Nigeria for today, I can tell you fashion is a major, major area where we find our women. So what can, what can give me an edge to make sure that I can push it and I can also be able to attract foreign investors into my brand? Yeah, that's a great question. I think, um, you know, to very simply answer it, uh, you know, we need to understand how you're getting the product to an American customer. Right. So I think having a strong partner on this side uh, of the ocean um, as, a, as an importer or a, a distribution partner would probably make the most sense in terms of, you know, how are you able to meet your customers demands? Now, I have myself purchased some Nigerian fashion from the Internet for my wife. Um, we have, you know, I guess, some some prints on my, you know, curtains behind us, but, you know, we also have a lot of clothes and I, she really likes some of the dresses. And so, you know, I, I went to one website and found this, this, this beautiful dress and ordered it. And they said, oh, it'll be six months, you know, until we can figure out how to get it to you. Well, honestly, as a consumer, uh, despite how much I loved this dress, uh, it, it, I canceled the order because, you know, I, what's the point of waiting six months for something when you've ordered it? On the flip side, I found another website that was similar. Uh, maybe I didn't like the dress quite as much, but they had a local distribution partner in Boston. Uh, I've, I've come to find out now, and I was able to get that within a week. So, you know, US consumers have limited patience. And because we have Amazon where we can order something and have it delivered tomorrow, um, we're also very spoiled as customers. 
And so we, we tend to want to see that, you know, happening quickly. And we tend to be very skeptical and uh, might not complete transactions when we're not sure how long it'll take to get it. So, you know, I think if, if you're in fashion and you're really trying to sell to U.S. markets, you know, part of it is your marketing, of course, but I think part of it is very much having product that's landed here in stateside that's able to deploy directly to your customers without having to solve that challenge of when's the next container ship coming? How much do I have to buy to get on there? Or am I going to have to pay $35 per parcel to use UPS to get it over, which yeah. prohibitively expensive, cuts into your profits, and, and really just kills your business uh, from the outset or causes you to have to charge way more than the market even allows for that item. So I, I do think, yeah, having, having a partner here, which again, we can help with because we have networks of these sorts of businesses uh, through the Department of Commerce and others here in the U.S., um, one of the pieces I didn't mention that's exciting that's coming is a buyer supplier connection um, thing program. I, I don't know, I struggle on how to describe it, but, but a sort of series of events almost like this to help connect buyer and supplier on both sides. And then, yeah, how do, how do you do a partnership with a U.S. entity that's then your distributor, your distributing partner here in the U.S.? Um, these are some things we're going to be trying to help with. Wow, wow. I think that's so exciting wow. for me. And I think we have to just watch out, stay glued to your page to ensure that when the buyer supplier scheme comes up, we can quickly latch on it. Because I can tell you that that's one of the challenges that uh, small businesses have here. So a lot of them use either their family relative to say, okay, you know what, I'm going to be producing and sending them to you. Just please find a way to help me sell them. Or they just sell on their um, Instagram pages, the social media handles. And then when you order, they connect and say, oh, okay, this person, please uh, deliver to this person. And they produce and send like maybe ship um, on sea. It will take time. So their turnaround for orders are going to be significantly high. So when I make an order from US, for instance, before you ship it from Nigeria because it's not effort, and before I finally get it there, maybe I've even lost interest and I'm like, oh no. You know, so this supplier buyer scheme, I think it will be very interesting and helpful for the women. And uh, I think we, we just have to ensure that, you know, we stay glued. And as soon as it's hop, fine tuned, we quickly latch on to it. A lot of our women have also, um, you know, access um, uh, seed funding uh, through Prosper Africa, especially women that have gone through our womenpreneur uh, mini MBA in the past. So uh, for all of those women, their testimonies are usually like, oh, I never knew uh, this kind, this sort of a thing exists until, you know, I started um, um, putting my hands on it. And just like Jeremy has assured us, it's not a, it's not a painstaking process, so to say. They are pretty fast, especially when you start to, you know, when you, when you prepare yourself uh, relatively with the business plan, the, the, the financial projections, you, you know, it, 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 when, by the time you start the process, you just find out that they help you, even guide you, and it's going to be pretty fast than you think. You know, it's not something like, oh, uh, you will never get to the end of this kind of uh, thing. So I encourage everyone to please do that. Uh, for SJ, you were saying that what are the requirements for exploitation of oil and dry foods and all of that? I think I think that that that's that's for that would have been for patients actually because you need to get a license locally here in Nigeria. You need to have a NAVDAC number, and these products have to also be acceptable for export into the country for import into the country you intend to send it. If it is US, there are some prohibited items. So even if you have NAVDAC number for it from Nigeria, you can't take it across the US. There are licenses, there are um, organizations you need to register with. There are licenses you need to have. And you know, when the time you get all of those things together. But I think the best thing uh, to, to answer that is for you to start. We are still going to share the contact of uh, the NEPC uh, lady that she's unable to join so that some of those uh, um, inquiries on the local side um, 
is going to be available to us. A lot of people seem to be worried about not being able to sell on Amazon uh, because a lot of people have been saying to me, oh, Amazon, Amazon, Amazon. And I'm like, I know uh, if you were here earlier in the session, um, we had one of the videos that showed the first grant winner in the Women Brunoa Picture Tour season one, that was in 2019. Her business name is Cutting Loops. And today, I can tell you, I, I'm, I'm sure very soon, her product will probably be on Amazon. It's some of these processes that she followed, you know, you know, trying to she, 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 she took her time to follow the process. So I don't think it's not a doable thing. I don't think it's not a doable thing. We just need to probably, you know, uh, uh, work uh, with it. They said it's so disheartening having the product that has high demand across the globe, but finding it difficult to place it in the brand, in the brand in the competitive market. Exposition is stressful. We need Amazon in Nigeria. So that is it for you, Jeremy. If you can bring Amazon to Nigeria for us, we'll be excited about it. If there's anything that is doable, please do not hesitate uh, to support and help us with that. Wow. <laughs> I think the wow. next Amazon is coming out of Nigeria. I will oh, put that great. down right there. We don't okay. need Amazon in Nigeria. I think Amazon's gonna come out of Nigeria and take over Amazon, right? Wow, wow. We see some great startups. It's, great. it's just exciting, yeah. Wow, very, very exciting. Thank you so much. Thank you. And for people that are still asking for Jeremy's email, he had put it there before. I'll call it out again. It's J-E-F-A-B-E-R, that's J-E-F-A-B-E-R at USAID.gov. Uh, it was there before, but I am actually going to um, um, type it in again or uh, my colleague, would we'll actually put it there again. So please just take it, jefaber at usaid.gov. And of course, it will be very glad to uh, respond to all your inquiries. I'm trying to check if it's time for us to be rounding up and going into the main class. However, um, I'm still checking because we, as much as possible, we want to take advantage of having Jeremy with us today. So please, if you still have more questions, keep it coming, keep it coming. We'll take as much as we can here uh, today. Okay. Okay, any question? I'm trying to check through just in case I didn't read your question, please maybe you repost it there. Uh, okay, so someone says, uh, what specific options should I look for when planning for exporting? When I want to plan for exportation, what are the specific options I should look for? Uh, Jeremy, can you help with that? I can. I, I do think this is another one for patients. Um, and I would say, you know, in, in this scenario, you know, you mentioned, um, you know, having to have the certificate locally in Nigeria to even have something for export. I mean, that's something where the end of the expertise from Prosper Africa is there and the expertise that you get locally and should seek locally starts, you know. So largely, again, it's, it's these kinds of connections that we're making where we're trying to firm up a 360 kind of trade piece and we recognize that we can only go so far, but then locally, you're going to have to, you know, get your certificates and, and work with the local exporter of record, like, like somebody who's done this before, get a mentor, um, work with somebody like the Export Trade Council, like what patients, uh, you know, represents. Um, those are incredibly important partners. You can't have too many partners. So you can work with us and them and everybody else. You can work with access through the programs. They're, you know, the, the more partners, the better. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. So someone is asking, what's your social media handle? I'm sure they want to follow you. So as soon as you post it, that is a buyer-seller scheme, they just jump at it. <laughs> what's your social media handle? Maybe you type it in there for us so that everyone could have it. I would also say to you, I'm sure Jeremy has mentioned a couple of times that you can't have too many partners. While you're seeking to work with Prosper Africa, you're seeking to work with uh, USAID, you are seeking to work with Access Bank. There's so many of this information. I'm, I can dare to say that maybe not for media, 
A lot of you would not have heard about the 280 million financing that we just signed with the um, Development Finance Corporation. So these are the benefits of information that you can take, you can get very easily. And I would enjoy you all to follow us on our social media platform, dwcommunity.com. DW community, that's T H E W community, T H E W, then T O M M U N I T Y dot com. That's it on all our social media handle Instagram, Facebook, uh, 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 um, uh, YouTube. We are there on Twitter as well. So if you follow us, all these informations are going to be there. And if you were not able to join this class early enough, and you've missed part of what uh, Jeremy had said, we're going to make the recording of this available to you so that you are in this session. Yes, you are able to get, um, you're able to get the direct questions answered for you. At the same time, you will get the recordings of this uh, afterwards. Someone also asked if they can have mentors for startups in export business. Is it possible? Sorry, can you repeat that? I missed the- If they can have mentors for startups. Ah. So for somebody just starting a business, are they able to get mentors for uh, uh, an export business? You know, in, we, we would like to get to a point where we're connecting people with mentors, but we're not quite there yet, to be totally frank. We just don't um, have quite the bandwidth to be directly providing mentors. But I think through forums like this, where you're meeting others on the call. Um, so if you're a startup, I guarantee there are other, you know, seed ready um, companies that are on this call. You know, those are the kind of mentors I would recommend uh, getting in touch with. Someone local, someone in the same sector, and someone who's advanced past where you're at a couple of years. Um, so you can really see the challenges and maybe some of the pitfalls and avoid some of them um, based on that local mentorship. I think, you know, uh, Remote mentorship is fine. Networks that we could provide are fine, but the best, most successful mentors are those that have been through the exact challenges that you're going to go through here in the short term. Yeah, thank you so much. So just like someone had asked um, um, this question, I think one of our participants also answered to say that NEPC, that's the Nigerian Export Promotion Council, they actually run a lot of these trainings for women and all SMEs on exports and that can actually help you. So uh, even though we don't have patients here, um, just try as much as possible to um, go to their website and you would see a lot of information there. You can follow us also on the social media handle so you can get up to date information on when they are going to be having trainings and then you can register and be a part of it. They even run a lot of physical sessions after COVID. I know that patients would have told us more about that. But if you follow them, you will be seeing all the schedules. If it's in your locality, you would um, you will try and then be available uh, from those ones. Uh, so apart from online means, are there other options to exploit to get export orders? So uh, I don't know if you get that, Jeremy. So someone says, if I'm, a, if I'm in trading here, yeah, if I'm in a trade business here in Nigeria. So apart from someone coming online on my, on my social media to say, oh, I like this thing, can I order it? Are there other ways that you can get export orders? So can someone in the US order for me apart from being online? Yeah, you know, I, I'd say that there are a lot of trade shows and trade missions uh, that are happening that can help you get those orders. I mean, a trade show or a trade mission, the goal at the end of the day is to have contracts signed. Um, so trade missions, for example, we have groups here from the US who are bringing small businesses over to countries in Africa all the time. I'm trying to think when the next one in Nigeria might be. I know we just had one in Cameroon, Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire, Benin, Togo. Um, and so as we work down, I'm sure Nigeria is coming up soon too. And it's a place that everybody looks at, of course, uh, as one of the top markets on the continent. Um, so yeah, as you see that a trade mission, either from the United States or from European countries, largely try to get in front of those and then find trade shows that are local or regional 
Um, because again, the whole goal there, you have people with checkbooks who are coming and, and looking to cut a check to, you know, actually execute a contract um, to, to, you know, that then that's the point of the trade show. So the organizers as well, you know, have a, have a vested interest in making those connections happen. Um, the buyer seller thing that we're looking at doing is kind of a small version of what, what a large trade show can do. Ours would be done as a public good, would probably be done virtually um, with a small in-person component, just to, to just where we're at right now. But depending on what sector you're in, there are some massive trade shows across the continent that I've participated in. Next year, we have the Inner Africa Trade Fair coming up, which is co-hosted by Afro Exim Bank. Uh, Prosper Africa will be there, but that's like 25,000 people across many sectors. And, and that's one of the one of the big boy shows down in uh, Durban um, where, yeah, like it's this, it's those kinds of things. And I know resources can be tight. I know it's expensive to fly down to Durban from Lagos. Um, I do. I've flown from Durban to Lagos and back. So I get it. Um, but there are sometimes grants available to help cover the cost of your travel to attend a trade show. Uh, if you're a U.S. small business, the Small Business Administration does that, provides grants to U.S. small businesses to go to Africa to attend trade shows to try to execute contracts. So I know that U.S. small businesses are going there um, and getting their expenses covered largely uh, through those grants. So there's a lot of stuff there. Wow. Wow. I was going to I've tried to touch on the next question about someone is still trying to be sure how will the seller buyer program work? What exactly is it? He wants to get you know, a grab of it. Is this something you can just take as we run? What we're trying to address is a need that keeps coming up where um, you know, we have an African producer saying, I just need a distributor in the US. Or we have US distributors saying, I just need a supplier in Africa of this class of goods. Um, and because of how the U.S. government's different departments and agencies are aligned, where the mandates are, it's actually very challenging for us to just take a list of companies in this space and provide it to another group of companies in the space on the other side. It's illegal in some ways. We have a thing called the Trade Secrets Act, which protects business interests that work directly with government folks like me and prevents me from sharing any details about your business at all with anybody else ever. End of story. So we're trying to come up with ways to break down that barrier and to bring some of, again, what we're hearing is a massive need, um, largely in agriculture, um, a little bit less in um, ICT, so uh, information communications technology, so tech, tech-enabled apps, health apps, um, ag, ag tech, you know, all, all sorts of things like that and trying to connect the dots where we, we're hearing and we know that there's two sides that just need to be connected. Um, what it won't be out of the gate is just everything. So we have to be focused and we're going to focus on a couple of critical sectors. And I think energy would be the third sector I'd work in there, um, you know, with the climate change you know, issues are so big. So anything, if you know, that you're working in your business to address climate change or you're doing carbon offsets or, you know, uh, anything in clean energy, those are clearly going to be um, things that we're trying to focus on. Wow. 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 It's actually been a very impactful evening for me. Uh, a lot of information have, has, has been doled out here this evening. And I think that you know, even if you didn't hear all, just make sure you watch out for the recording. And because this is also a training and enlightenment uh, uh, session to make us understand what else we can do, you know, for, for us to actually uh, position that our business in the global space. Uh, and this is actually a masterclass, actually, like we had mentioned. You're all going to be having a, a certificate of participation issued to you. So if you're in this class, you're going to have a certificate of participation. Maybe it could even help you when you're saying to Post Africa, I was under Jeremy when he was telling us this, so I understand some of this. This is an evidence that I was there, you know, just by the way. So if you are interested in getting your certificate, please, the link is in the chat box. Please click on it so that we can get your details and ensure that um, the information that will be on the issued certificate is perfect. Some people will be joining with not with the names that they want on their certificate. So we want you to give us as a tease.
that you want it reflected and that will be issued and sent uh, uh, to you. Additionally, uh, someone is, Malik is actually confirming that he was actually at the last trade show at Durban and indeed was a great experience. So that's one of our uh, entrepreneurs confirming that yes, it's actually a, an exciting thing and we are going to um, uh, learn and going to be able to maybe, you know, get some great deals there. So if you want to go, I think Jeremy also mentioned that there are even some uh, organization that can sponsor you in terms of a grant to attend the, the, the trade show. Am I correct? Potentially, yes, through through our U.S. Africa Development Foundation, which is one of the agencies that makes up Prosper. Okay, U.S. Africa Development what? Foundation. Okay, so I am writing that down because trust me, if Access Bank is not sending me there, I will go and find a way to make a request. I hope you noted that as well. Yeah, uh, I'll put their website in there as well. Okay, okay, fantastic. So and here's how you can apply it. for a grant through through their website directly. Yep. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. So um, just like we have said, we're going to share the recording to you. Uh, for the mini MBA program, through the Women Premier Picture Tours is in four that the application is ongoing. We have also dropped the link for registration on the site. So if you are interested, there's nothing stopping you. You don't even need to have an account with Access Bank to participate. Last year, we had about 38,000 registrations from women all across Nigeria and other African countries. This year is bigger and better. Uh, we are looking at having seven grant winners, apart from the 100 women that will be going to the mini MBA program certified by IFC, all free of charge. So it's worth your while. Please click on the, uh, the link and make sure you put in your registration uh, today. Um, yeah. Okay. Malik is smiling hard. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. So... Thank you so much. Someone is saying the next trade show is at Côte d'Ivoire. Wow. Okay, so we all go together. Let's let's note that. <laughs> wow. So uh, fantastic. Uh, for me, I've had a very interesting evening, learning and hearing some of these things that you know you just keep the answers in your head. You don't know who to ask. You don't know how to go about it. So these are the things that Jeremy has uh, thrown light on. And uh, I think that's actually very, very, very impactful for me. I don't know about you. I want you to keep the chats coming in in the chat box. But right now, uh, we need to go into the, we need to go back into the main class as we round up. And uh, let me also say that we've had some very, very active participants. In fact, it's obvious that they didn't come here to joke. And of course, we have some winnings for them as well. You know, W does not do anything and then we just allow it to uh, pass like that. There's always an icing on the cake so that you participated and you were active in class. Uh, yes, there are some winnings for that. And um, can I have them? Can I have them posted here, please? Two winners have been selected for this class and they will be winning some free one-on-one uh, -on -one consultation with experts to guide them on their business. Anything at all, these are consultants that are very groomed. They can help you with some of these questions and they're going to groom you properly. Uh, please, can we have their names here at the chat box, please? So that we can announce them quickly. Uh, okay, I can't see them right now, but then, okay, so we'll go back to the main class. I uh, would, would get the announcement to you at the end of this session. Thank you so much. Let's go back. Please don't leave from here. Go back into the chat room and uh, let's go there and round up together. See you there. Thank you. Thank you. I can see the class. So let's go back to the main room. <laughs> Thank you. Let's go back to the main room, please. Although this class will be closed shortly, and then we we'll all go to the main room.